Preseason football is here. It's time to get ready for those fantasy football drafts. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Pick up your UDK, our full projections, sleepers, breakouts, busts, values, and this thing will be updating all until the NFL kickoff on that big Thursday. Head there right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's backup football time. <laughs> oh, 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 no. You know what? I... I'm happy you did that. I can't give it the full one. That's because you don't want to lose no. that for actual kickoff, right? Yeah. It doesn't deserve it. It's not <laughs> actually. Just rolls off the tongue, though, right? It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's back up football time. It's, it's kind of football time. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, last year we saw superstar sensation <laughs> Josh Jacobs dominate mm. lead into the Hall of Fame game. So I, I hear you loud and clear. Zach Wilson, move him up. That's what he said. <laughs> Yeah, Zach Wilson starts tonight. That's good football. Or, I mean, good TV. <laughs> I, are you not rooting for him? Zach Wilson? Yeah. No, 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 no. Let, let me ask you this as we, as we kick off today's episode. I, I root for 99% of players. Zach Wilson has just, he pushed himself into a 1% where I'm like, nah. We do have football tonight. It is backup football. It is the Hall of Fame game. And we're so hungry for it that we'll probably watch it. And then be reminded of how bad it is. I'll, I'll peek in. But, um, you know, it'll be fun to have football on the television. I was going to ask this because it's Jets-Browns tonight. And we got a big show today, by the way. We got news. We got the wide receiver rankings countdown. We got best ball breakdown. And um, we'll be with you today, tomorrow, every weekday through the end of the season. But let me ask you this about the Jets. Because... Um, you know, we, we have been uh, jovial about mm -hmm. some of the habits of their new quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Rodgers, who, uh, you know, I don't feel guilty about that because he puts himself out there in lots of different ways. He's a unique fella. And, and yet, I have been very impressed with Aaron Rodgers recently. In particular, his comments defending Nathaniel Hackett, who's considered his uh, – you know, it's his favorite coach, uh, historically uh, that he's ever worked with. Oh, and, and is, he, is that what he said? Yes, I, I believe what, he, he said, said one of yeah, his favorites. One of okay, and he and he defended him because Sean Payton kind of broke the code and came out and openly criticized Nathaniel Hackett. And the comments that I saw from Rogers on that I thought were leadership comments. And then all the reports from camp, all the tape, very very um, welcoming to Zach Wilson, very, very much working with him to, you know, he didn't get that from Brett Favre in Green Bay. Right. And there is a torch he, to be passed here, even though the he joke. He didn't give it to Jordan Love. <laughs> yeah. Correct. <laughs> so what I'm saying is he's take, he's turning over a new leaf mm. in these gray beard days that I think I'm impressed with. I think he's been a great leader for the Jets. And I, I am very optimistic about the Jets' chances this year. I really am. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the situation is just backwards. It's different. He's the replacement. He's coming in to replace who was the starter versus them drafting someone to replace him. Sure. So you would expect him to, to have a, a better attitude in this situation. Well, I would hope. Well, yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying we would expect that of humanity. Like, you would say, oh, I, he, should, he should come in and be a leader. And just to play devil's advocate here, because we're, we're all you know bullish on – the Jets, their prospects, their fantasy players, were sure that a Nathaniel Hackett partially partially run team uh, trading for a Hall of Fame level quarterback mm. for a team that looked like they're a quarterback away mm. from making a Super One. We're, we're sure it's going to work this time. Hmm. This would be a um, be <clears throat> a bit of a because we've been <laughs> we've been here. A bit of a Russell Wilson Broncos situation. Correct. Yeah, I'm. I I feel 
Well, and a really good and a really good defense where you barely yeah. need anything out of the That's offense at all. I, I, he's not the heck. It's not mm. the head coach. I have more confidence in in Sala, but <laughs> there are many many parallels to what is happening for the Jets that we went through with the Broncos. And what's really funny is one of my things to remember was that when quarterbacks have lost it, that's like. Players that have lost it, they don't get it back. You know, we, Russ didn't look great, and then it was like, oh, he's, you know, I don't think he's going to get better necessarily. And Rodgers wasn't that great last year. And I know we we blame the Devonte Adams, but oh, maybe, I blame the broken hand too. I mean, that didn't help. Maybe he's. I, I mean, I, we'll see. Yeah, I've got my thoughts on them. I was not in on Denver for the record last yeah, year, no, so I have is, a right to be in on one of these. That is, that is accurate. <laughs> I made money betting against their win total last year. <laughs> it was delightful. Um, like I said, wide receiver ranking show today. Mike mentioned it at the top, the ultimate draft kit available right now, being updated every day. Um, we made tweaks based off the Cooper Cup news recently. I tweeted something very early this morning. I've been up way too long today. But sometimes there are things you do in your life that you do just because you got to do them. And you, they don't bring you joy. You got to pay your taxes, right? Mm -hmm. You got to do the chores around the house. Well, Wesley Snipes disagrees, but um, that's true. And Richard Hatch. Uh, <laughs> it's a good old tax fraud joke. Yeah, really. It goes <laughs> with the computer jokes. Um, but the third one is if I that doesn't bring me joy, but you have to do it sometimes. It's bumping up Najee Harris and Alexander Madison in my rankings. Well, well, well. And this morning, Najee Harris got a little bump. All right, okay. just just okay. out of uh, out of researching the Steelers camp, dependency on the run. Uh, you know, just giving him a little bit more volume, maybe a little more effectiveness. Um, not something I enjoy doing, but I'm willing to do it. Okay, for the good of the Foot Clan. That's that's a big for the man. good of the Foot. Big man over here. Just saying, the tweaks are happening every <laughs> single day. Uh, the community has joined the Foot dot com that gets you access to our premium Discord server where you can find Foot Can Foot Clan leagues. Uh, to join, this is the time to jump into leagues. People are always looking for new players. And then if you uh, are starting a league and you're looking for someone to join, that's a great place to go. You can find uh, an extra episode of the show every week and a lot of premium perks that will go on to uh, the regular season. That's all at jointhefoot.com as well. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. Jets Browns tonight. Few pieces of news or hype or speculation we can talk about. Uh, another reiteration by John Harbaugh. He doesn't know when J.K. Dobbins is going to return to the team. <sighs> uh, all of the language around this is kind of, it almost feels like John Harbaugh, obviously, like he's not involved in the broad negotiations. So it's right. like they're just talking. You can tell he's disappointed. Mike, you tweeted yesterday about Gus Edwards. Yeah. It, 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 we. We need to be paying attention. We're starting to get into that time. I know like, Melvin Gordon is there. Uh, I think Melvin Gordon is kind of past his moment. And yeah, there was you know there was certainly Gus Edwards' hope and hype last year. I think it worked out for a game. Uh, but Gus Edwards was also recovering from his own injury. You know, just like J.K. Dobbins. Ooh, beep beep. Uh, like Gus Edwards looks like he's healthy. Like he looks like he's ready to go. And to me, how many legs does he have? He's got two working okay, legs. Got it. I, as far as I can tell. All right. But it, to me, it seems like if JK is to actually take this to the next level, Gus Edwards would be the next person up and the excitement for the Ravens, it would carry over to Gus Edwards. So I think that he is someone who, like if you're in a deeper league, he you he should be on your radar as just a stash on on a big bench. We also talked yesterday, Jason. You brought up the fact that, uh, you know, historically you're not buying injury dips in players. When we and Matthew Best talked about the fact that players that get injured in camp they don't generally meet their ADP value. And Mike also tweeted yesterday about the tight end situation, which has been very valuable historically in Dallas with the Schoon Man, yeah. who we all want to see succeed. He's hurt. Yes. And, um, you know, when you look at opportunities there, maybe you need to pay more attention to Jake Ferguson. In 100%. Deeper leagues, um, Dalton Schultz was not a name we knew until we knew it, right? Mm -hmm. The involvement, uh, Dak throwing to that position, very important. 
Yeah, and, and Ferguson's been pretty good in camp. Uh, last I saw, the last practice report I read, he had two touchdowns, uh, Ferguson did. So, yeah, it's definitely a name. If you're uh, playing on underdog, you know, where you're rolling three tight ends deep, I've got Ferguson on a lot of leagues. ESPN, uh, more speculation around the Baltimore wide receivers. Just just the dumbest speculation yeah, of all time. Yeah, I'm not I, – I, it's just – Mike brought up Zay Flowers yesterday, said Flowers and Beckham are solidifying themselves, but Bateman's still on the pup. So, yeah. But, I mean, it's still true, right? You still – you get more reps, more playing time. You, we just talked about injuries in the preseason. Yeah, there was, you know, it, it there was some puff pieces coming about, uh, out about Nelson Aguilar. So, it was like yeah. he was just kind of floating there in the mist of like, He's oh, been very good. I love Zay Flowers, but what happens if all of a sudden Aguilar is the starting wide receiver with Odell Beckham? As of right now, it does not seem that way. And then the last piece of news, and I didn't get to see the clip, but Commander's head coach Ron Rivera himself said, don't sleep on Jacoby Brissett when asking about the team's quarterback competition. It seems like a weird comment. I didn't <laughs> yeah, get to see a, it, like it, I said. I mean, <laughs> the pre-concession. Coach, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, when he, Jacoby when, Brissett. When he puts Brissett in, he's just, I told you. I mean, I, I told you not to sleep on this guy. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to happen? Oh, that's easy. I want Sam Howell to be the starter and start 17 games. But I want to own a football team as well. <laughs> so, like, there's a lot of things in life that you, you really don't want, and you're just not going to get them. But um, I like Sam Howell. I really liked, you know, some of what he did in college, and I'm happy he's going to get the opportunity. I'm sad that his opportunity is coming without – uh, investment in him and the obligation to let him play through uh, bad moments because I think, I, I think I think he could develop into a, a good quarterback if he was given the rope but I mean this is just proof right here like he has no rope none right. you don't play well don't sleep on Jacoby it's it's gonna I mean there's no chance that both of these quarterbacks don't play this year well and I think he infers here that Jacoby Reset may win the job from the onset. That's yes. what he's saying. And so yeah, Jacoby's good. I think I'm at the point now with Terry McLaurin where I want I want a known commodity that I don't have to say in my head, what if he gets somebody better than this? Because he's never gotten it. So to me, I think I'm rooting for Jacoby because of what he provided for um Amari Cooper last year, which was great. Like Amari Cooper was a big surprise. Nobody expected the kind of season from him and Jacoby was the the fuel to that. So I think I might be rooting for the, because Sam Hell, it could be the, it could go the other direction. Oh, for sure. sure. You could wash out four weeks of the season, Terry McClure not producing, and then you're like, oh, now we're going to make the switch. So you're just saying you want the first half of the year to to be better and not the second <laughs> yeah, half of guess, the year. I, I guess, yes. Okay. That is what I am saying because there will be a change. I, I am getting news uh -oh. from Coach Rivera saying, don't sleep on Jake Fromm. Really? Yeah. Mm. They're just they're covering all aspects of the quarterback position. <sighs> yeah. Because Jake Fromm is, is apparently the third string quarterback for the commanders. Right, which you can go from third to first pretty quick there. Uh that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. It is time, gentlemen, to jump in to our rankings episodes. Wide receivers. All right. Today we begin the wide receiver rankings countdown. And we begin at number 20 with DJ Moore. A reminder, all the tiered rankings, customizable scoring, printable cheat sheets, the mobile app, uh, all the changes to the rankings. You can find them all at ultimatedraftkit.com. DJ Moore. Here we are again. He he is a mainstay on the uh, eleven through twenty episode of yeah. the wide receiver rankings. Yeah, he lives here. Twenty six years old, a brand new member of the Chicago Bears. I believe I read recently that uh, Justin Fields, in terms of the MVP betting market, has more money placed down on him to win MVP than I believe Allen and Mahomes and Hurts combined. It, it it makes sense because his his odds are going to be they're a, a much much larger payout, and it's like it it's it's Lamar the Lamar Jackson effect of like 
seeing what he could do rushing wise, and if the passing takes the next step, like freaky stuff happens. I would say it's the Jalen Hurts. Sure, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that last too. year more money was placed on Hurts. So what I the reason I brought it up is simply Jason that the expectation is there publicly for a big step forward for Justin Fields. We spent an off season you telling me Jalen Hurts is going to throw the ball more. Us looking historical. Historical wasn't prescriptive for Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. What was prescriptive was the addition of a huge wide receiver uh, to that offense that changed what they were capable of doing. This offense has DJ Moore now. So are, could could people be sleeping on a top 12 wide receiver in DJ Moore this season? Yeah, I, I think that is possible. I've risen on DJ Moore, and, and uh, you're right to bring up Fields. Fields is the entirety of whether or not uh, DJ Moore has a good season. And and it's not a matter of, will they let him throw more? It's just, is he going to level up? Do you believe that Justin Fields is a good thrower of the football? Because that's what's going to matter for DJ Moore. And I have started to believe, yeah, I mean, we, we've seen it, right? We've seen it s several times here. Lamar Jackson, uh, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, these guys who have that dual threat ability who level up their passing to a level that it's like, oh, yeah, this is really good for their their fantasy assets. You know, Diggs is great, and A.J. Brown is great. So can D.J. Moore actually succeed to a level he hasn't yet? Absolutely. I believe that that really can happen, but it is entirely on the basis of whether or not Fields can level up. Pre-NFL draft, I believed Fields was a very good passer, and so I, I, I think I need to put my money where my mouth is with regards to D.J. Moore and believe that – it will be good for him. We've we've had and it's something to be said about how good DJ Moore really is. I mean, we've had Diggs moving teams successful, Hopkins moving teams successful, Tyreek Hill last year, more yards, more receptions than ever in Kansas City switching teams. Confidence in Tua wasn't there. Confidence in Josh Allen wasn't there. Um, AJ Brown switching teams very successful. So, is DJ Moore on that level? His fantasy finishes the last four years: eighteen, twenty-two, nineteen, twenty-two. This is the guy that gets the middle management job, and then they're like, do you want a promotion? He's like, I'm good. I'm good 18 to 22. Yeah, he's he's always been very inconsistent, and we've we've desired him to get a better quarterback. We've blamed the quarterback. Uh, but we're going to find out, I think, this year, whether it's just this is who DJ Moore is, and he disappears sometimes. He's a C in our consistency grade, uh, about 40% of the time giving you a, a really good fantasy game, and that's not going to get it done. So even though he finishes as a wide receiver two every year, you've been really unhappy with how it comes about. It's not like a consistent uh, producer on your on your roster, even though he finishes as a wide receiver two. You want to hear just a, a tiny little perhaps serendipitous uh, situation here. Currently, DJ Moore is the wide receiver 23. In the year 2020, when Stephon Diggs changed teams to the Buffalo Bills, he was, in fact... ADP, the wide receiver, 23. Okay. And this is the Mike Wright Redemption Tour with Madison and Moore and Gibson. and <laughs> Just saying, like, Stephon Diggs. P. Ryan. Stephon Diggs, was, because of Josh Allen, which, like, at the time, absolutely made sense because you didn't see Josh Allen taking a historic bump up as a as a passer. But Stephon Diggs, the, the ADP was the, – the, the risk was baked into the ADP – and the risk is baked in here for DJ Moore. Wide receiver, 23, fifth-round pick. I would take him there. I think the upside is worth it. I think DJ Moore is an elite wide receiver. I really believe that. I It's been opportunity in quarterback play. I think you know, I would be saying the same thing about Terry McLaurin having a new opportunity someplace else. So uh, is it scary? Oh, yeah. I mean, very scary. They had um, – two total games where a wide receiver was over 12 fantasy points last year. So that's not great. No, that's not great, but they also had no wide receivers last year. They, yeah. they lost, you know, Mooney and they didn't have other talent on the roster. So, um, when you did know, they lose Mooney though. Felt uh, like really early. <laughs> I mean, he played, he played 12 weeks. So I think it's still notable that poor, poor Mooney couldn't even get over 12 fantasy points. But uh, but you're right. I mean, it is a risk. If they don't pass more, we will be disappointed. Yeah, but at the very least, if they don't pass more, you know he's going to be the number one 
read. He's going to have a high target share. And so the I think the floor here is basically what you've had the last few years, which is okay. It's not, you know, I, I said you've been disappointed with DJ Moore because you wanted more and got less, but it's, you know, you're still going to end up with a wide receiver too. I don't think there's a world where he ends up outside the top 24 wide receivers. Well, what about this guy? Number 19, Calvin Ridley, wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Going ahead of DJ Moore right now, the wide receiver 19 off the board. The average draft position, late fourth round. Uh, I got him at 17, Mike at 21, Jason at 24. This isn't fair. I was the first <laughs> believer in Calvin Ridley, and now you guys have jumped my rankings. You jumped ship. I, I just haven't moved. <laughs> I've left him where he's been forever. Yeah, man, get with the program. Yeah. Uh, Times change, dude. I'd, ra I'd rather be uh, I'd rather be last than first on these <laughs> rankings. All right, uh, he hasn't played in the NFL in 700 days. There's that. Uh, he's got a cleat problem. I think that one's going to be under control. But look, Calvin Ridley seems like a huge risk reward selection in this year's draft. Very. I I don't know if wide receiver. Do you do you think wide receiver 19? is like the feasible outcome, or do you think this is going to be a he's much higher or much lower situation? Yeah, no, I I, I would say that. I, I believe he is either going to be closer to a wide receiver one or it's going to be a, a really balanced offense where the target market share isn't there and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and Zay Jones are all involved and he's – you know, more like a, a you know an inconsistent low end wide receiver too, and so you're you're taking that gamble when you draft him as the wide receiver nineteen in the fourth round, and and part of that is what do you believe in Trevor Lawrence? Do you think he's going to level up to an MVP caliber player? Their division is very winnable. They pretty much, I feel like, uh, you know, odds wise, Vegas wise. You know, they've got a ticket to the playoffs right now. So that that only happens with Trevor Lawrence leveling up. Well, and he's got potential for 4,700 to 5,000 yards passing, which is something that, you know, the previous – like Justin Fields is not doing that. He's not touching that number. They also have a bunch of good players. Christian Kirk's good. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram's good. Mm -hmm. Zay Jones is good. But they – you know, Calvin Ridley has the potential to be great. He has the potential to be – um you know, it's like the routes we're watching in the in the preseason or in the training camp where you're like, you're a different speed than other people. You do different things with your body. You're you're a player that I mean he's finished four overall before. Yeah, I was gonna run through that. As a rookie, wide receiver twenty, then he was the wide receiver twenty five in only thirteen of sixteen games. Then he was the wide receiver four. Then Julio Jones leaves, and then of course Calvin Ridley uh deals with all of his mental health issues compounded then by the the year-long suspension for for gambling so it's it, this is such an interesting experiment of like this is a player who has done it before at an elite level and yet, yet we haven't seen him play football in basically two years so does does he still have it I mean probably he, he probably does and we we have the proof of the, the you know the proof that Trevor Lawrence can support a wide receiver one. Christian Kirk was that. It was kind of all like it felt it was stronger in the first half for Kirk, and then some more players started to get, to get involved. But you know that Trevor Lawrence is a is a good passer, could upgrade, can support a wide receiver one. So if this is, I don't know. Is it what, too I don't know how he, That's what it's going to say. You guys are a little bit behind his ADP in yes. your rankings because you are paying like a lot of the upside is baked into the cost right now. I like him as a wide receiver, too. I would take him there in the late fourth round because the explosiveness not being my number one wide receiver, I'd be happy with that. But is he on the cusp of being too expensive with all the excitement? Yes, because you are – this projection here in the ADP, the market is saying, we know without a doubt – Kyle, can you pull up um, Christian Kirk's ADP for me? The ADP says Zay or that Christian Kirk is the two. And that Calvin Ridley is the one. Yeah, six twelve. So I mean, yeah. So you have two full rounds here saying that Calvin Ridley is definitely the one, and we expect that, but you can't say for sure right now. So it is. It, this is a extremely risky pick, but the reward. We want high ceiling players. That that's how you win. 
That's how you win a fantasy football championship. So I love I, him I, in best ball. I think I really that the do. risk I think that the risk of the back of the fourth is probably worth it. We're gonna take a quick break. The first two wide receivers, they're gonna take their first snaps with a brand new team. The next guy we talk about might not have the quarterback he's used to. Back in a sec. All right, we're moving to number 18 in the wide receiver rankings. This is a player going in the late sixth round. Too low, in my opinion. This is a player drafted as the wide receiver 29, but he won't have his guy behind center. We're talking about Hollywood Brown. Hollywood. Ooh. I have uh, I got to confess something to you. He okay. has been a must pick for me in a lot of mock drafts this offseason. He is moving into maybe not a must pick category anymore. Oh really? Yes, there is some cold water uh, being thrown on the once magnificent fire that was Hollywood Brown. I know the talent of Hollywood Brown is there. I saw what he did without DeAndre Hopkins last year. But I also think he may play four, six, eight weeks with some combination of Clayton Toon and yeah, that's a player. Yeah, I heard sound <laughs> I heard sounds from Deucer's hey, Alley. I'm pretty sure that Clayton Toon was like PFF's number one ranked passer last year. Thank you. Thank you. Also I Colt think. also Colt McCoy, <laughs> who Colt McCoy just celebrated, congratulations, his fiftieth birthday. <laughs> and uh, playing great Dude, at that age. Don't don't both those sound like made up names? Colt like McCoy a, and a Clayton TV Toon? show, like a quarterback on a TV show. Yeah, they were actually uh that's wi a Wild West. Yeah, names. that that yeah. is definitely a Western. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. No, why don't you both get out and let <laughs> Kyler Murray play football? But um, I don't think I'm, – I'm to the point where we were speculating on Kyler's status for a long time. We're like, I think he could be back week one. I think he could be back week one. I don't think he's back week one. Like, I've, I've made that decision now mentally. And so because of that, I, I – what am I getting out of the gate? You know, you want to start strong in fantasy. Am I, am I running a risk? You've got a bunch of other players involved there. Yeah, no, I mean you're 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 not wrong. The Kyler news. We we are in Arizona here. I think that we would all say we're pretty confident Kyler is not going to be there week one. Uh, earlier in the off season, the the trajectory and him even saying like he's trying to get ready for week one, it seemed far more possible. And Marquise Hollywood Brown will be the number one target in the offense without Kyler. So it's not going to be completely worthless. If you look for sure, at for he, sure. He had four games last year at the end of the season where he didn't have Kyler. One of those games he was good, the other three he was bad. Um that being said, you know, th then you have Hopkins to contend with as well and you're not the one. So I I think if you take the risk on Hollywood it could pay off. I'm not out on Hollywood at his ADP. His ADP kind of has it baked in that that Kyler is going to miss that time. Yeah, wide receiver 29. Let's that's way below, and we all have him ahead of that. Yeah, I mean, let's say Kyler was healthy. Okay, let's just play the 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 hypothetical game. Kyler never got injured. He's coming into this season. They did still trade Hopkins. What would Hollywood's outcome be like as the clear de facto one for Kyler Murray where, where would he be drafted ADP uh wide receiver 15 yeah 16 so if Kyler comes back in week four and you have let's say the rest of the season the wide receiver 15 and you're yeah, drafting what is that about value? the wide receiver yeah. 30 is it worth taking a couple weeks of still a usable asset it's not like you wouldn't be able to play Hollywood through those first couple weeks. Well, let, let me put some more context in for, here for you because fantasy football very often, it's about how you start. That's how you then feel about players. So here's the Cardinals' opening schedule. It's not good. At Washington. With a not Kyler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming I'm going to go all four of these games. Yeah. Let's say it's Colt McCoy. At Washington, it's not the worst. Not the best. The New York Giants. They were a playoff team. They're secondary, though is beatable but then is Dallas and on the road against San Francisco those are not like that's not a string of four games where you're super pumped 
to have your wide receiver one against those teams. I, I'm nervous. With a backup I'm just more nervous than I was earlier. We we we're you know we've said Jason, you've said you're staying away from Carolina wide receivers, okay? Because you got a rookie quarterback there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know you 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 got worse than a rookie in Arizona. I mean, potentially. Bryce Young is going to be a better option, I think, than those oh, two guys for, sure. for the first four weeks. So it just makes me nervous. Like, it's a bumpier ride than we thought it would be, and I don't know if I want to go on the ride unless it's super, super cheap. You get into the seventh round, maybe you're just maybe he's just a depth piece and you're waiting for Kyler to return, and that's okay. Yeah, if, if he's a bench piece, I think you're right. But lo looking I, – I pulled up the ADP just to see, like, push comes to shove. I'm, you know, on the clock. And there's guys behind him that I would rather have. You know, I would rather have Tyler Lockett being drafted behind him. I agree. So I won't be taking Hollywood over him. Uh, Andy, I know you like Mike Evans yep. going behind him. Um, and Deontay Johnson or uh, Jordan Addison, Jahan Dotson. There's there's some higher upside guys that you don't have um, the, the opening worries about. All right. At 17, we have the first wide receiver we're talking about today. That uh, same team, same quarterback. To start the season. Super good. Super good. Super good quarterback. Super good quarterback. 24 years old. Last year's wide receiver, four, or sorry, this year, wide receiver 14 and ADP. Devontae Smith, who um, helped Jason to a championship last year with his second half of the season ascension. Um, right now, I seem to still have a problem with wide receiver twos based on my rankings because you guys have them at 13 and 15. I got them at 22 right now. I need to take a closer look at that where that relates to T. Higgins after our conversations yesterday. But you brought it up. You know, if you want to find a reason why Devontae Smith might not be as effective, a healthy Dallas Goddard uh, led to some lower outputs from him. Obviously, A.J. Brown is the alpha in the equation. You're going to have... Uh, some pass catchers in the backfield that they didn't have, DeAndre Swift. But I think that the moral of the story is Devontae Smith is probably is probably really his floor where he's where he's ending up. I mean, fourteen to seventeen, it seems hard to see him lower than that. As far as finishing, yeah, the as season, a fantasy yeah. finish outside of injury or some some it, massive problem, I I just don't like an injury that hurts or him. I think he's around his floor. Well, the the case against him is that a lot of his production came and it leveled up when uh, when Dallas Goddard was gone. Right. And so the question is, is that the new normal? Is he going to receive that level of targets with Dallas Goddard healthy and on the field? Uh, he's obviously going into year three. He should just be getting better. But the positive uh, n narrative here is the Eagles can't possibly, cannot possibly play as few of snaps you know, without trailing. They were just always in the lead last year. Um, I, I, I don't have the tweet in front of me, but I know Rich Rebar showed the first half points from Devonta Smith versus the second half points, and he was basically a top 10 wide receiver in the first half of, of games because he was just, they're throwing the ball. If the Eagles don't have as easy a time this season and, you know, the it, it probably they won't just because it, everything changes year after year. I think Devonta Smith could be a top 12 wide receiver this season. Uh, yeah, they have a turnover and offensive and defensive coordinator this year in Philadelphia. They're going to play a tougher schedule. So maybe they're in more of those games, but uh, Devonta Smith is just an elite player and he's going to have lots of opportunities. So um, Mike, what is the true, What's the peak finish for Devontae Smith? He was the wide receiver five over the last, from week 10 on, but it's a smaller stretch. Sure. Uh, like, absolute ceiling, I'm in agreement with Jason. that I, I think A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith could both be top 12 wide receivers. They could be the pair that ends up there um, over, over the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, having the two in the top 12. It was an interesting season of, like – like I said, how, how things start affects how you think about players so strongly, and it could not have started worse for Devonta Smith last year because he had, uh, let me check my notes, zero points in week one against the Detroit Lions in a high-scoring game. He had four targets, no catches, I th and I th 
I think that was a product of they got A.J. Brown and they were trying to figure things out because it bounced back in a, in a really big way. And then you can look through the, just the box score. His, his down games, they tend to make sense. It's like against Houston. Wide receivers, yeah, that was a problem. Wide receivers didn't do anything against Houston because they they did not need to do anything. Um, and he's just he's an excellent player. We're heading into year three. I think that the Eagles have figured out how to use both of these wide receivers. So I I don't have Smith ranked in my top twelve because I think that's the ceiling. I have him you know more of an average type of a finish. But I think he is a I think he's a really solid addition despite the fact that he is the two on his team. Sixteen. A player uh, opposite in proportions in every way, shape, and form <laughs> when compared to Devonta Smith. Seahawks wide receiver, 25 years old, third-round draft pick, D.K. Metcalf. D.K. Metcalf, we have quite a range in our individual rankings. He comes in at 15 uh, for us, or I'm sorry, 16 for us, but I have him at 10, Jason at 15, Mike at 25. Yeah, Ooh. I'm probably a bit low, but I, I'm more of the bear case. Clearly, he's actually standing outside. He heard uh, the he, bear. No, <laughs> DK Metcalf heard about oh. the ranking, and um, well, I would say be better. He couldn't get through. Oh that. man, say it to his face. I will say it to his face. I, Mike. I, I, I want to see it through a plexiglass. <laughs> he'll protection. He'll walk right through that. <laughs> he'll he just he'll blow it down. Um, DK Metcalf. I've I've risen a lot on him. Uh, Andy has made strong arguments for him. The positive touchdown regression that should come for him um, with the amount of red zone and end zone targets that he receives year after year after year, and the fact that he usually has double digit touchdowns. And then there's also the case that you you know. The start of seasons really, really matters for players. You just brought it up with mm -hmm. the bad start last year for Devonta Smith. <laughs> this, do you guys know who the Seahawks play the first two weeks? Uh, Rams? The Rams? Okay, that's great. That's great. Maybe as good as it gets. Although there's probably one better. The Lions, <laughs> which is the next week. So, um, okay. obviously that affects Tyler Lockett and JSN and, and Geno, Geno Smith. Smith. Um, I love Michael Keaton. Yeah, but... <laughs> DK Metcalf is someone who has that wide receiver one overall possibility. Yeah, you could you could see going into week three and he's got four touchdowns on the on the stat sheet already. I mean could happen. Um entering year five, prime territory for that alpha season. The touchdowns will come back to DK Metcalf. I want to be there when they do. It is um I went back and watched, and I don't I'd give credit to whoever posted it, but somebody it might have been Kyle. I don't remember. Somebody posted every single one of the red zone targets from last year. And so it was fun to watch through those and say, like, okay, that one he should have caught. Like, he had some drops in there. And then there were other, you know, bad passes. or just, It just didn't mm -hmm. quite work out. And if, like, three or four of those had, we wouldn't even be – he wouldn't be here in that, the rankings. That was, that was Kyle that posted it. I saw it as well. And I I just did the counting. I was like, which one of those, you know, one yep. of them, he, st oh, he did stepped you on. You added him up? I, I mean, mentally, I just, yeah. oh, he just stepped on the line. He caught the ball, but he was just like, oh, he's ruled out or whatever. Or this one, just a weird, unusual drop in the end zone. These weren't, these were like, he should have absolutely had four or five more touchdowns. And you're right. He, he wouldn't be drafted where he is right now if those had come last year. Uh, at Kyle underscore Borg. Mm. Oh. Okay. On Twitter. It's a good uh, follow. So will the ADP hold here, and are you willing to draft him wide receiver 15 where you have him ranked, Jason, late, yeah, late we, third? Yeah, when, when, uh, when I'm on the clock there, the only consideration where I don't sometimes take the shot on DK is I think the value is better yeah. on Tyler Lockett, and I will never draft both of those guys. So it, it kind of removes for me that seventh-round layup pick. That's the only thing that's – but do you not – let me let me put it this way: If if Jackson Smith and Jigba is it, mm -hmm. what? I mean, and and let's say Lockett or Metcalf are negatively impacted. I've always kind of gone to the default, and I guess ADP has too, that it would be Lockett that would be suffering from that breakout. Obviously, I'm saying if he's it, like if JSN comes out and he's the number, he's like the one target. You know, he's the guy getting a ton of PPR opportunities. Do you, have you entertained the Lockett 
downside or is there none because the price is just so cheap yeah I, I there's you know you talk okay we're we're always looking at risk versus reward you're not risking much right, so it's right. like it's reward versus very little risk and it's worth taking i don't see a world where jsn overtakes either one of the other two wide receivers positionally so he's gonna play the slot and maybe what happens is the seahawks surprise us and run more 11 personnel and they are in three wide receiver sets far more than they were last year, and JSN just happens to become that first read. And if that happens, it's going to negatively affect both of the players. Not, it's not going to like Probably. he's not going to overtake Lockett or overtake Metcalf and replace one of them. Yeah, I mean Lockett's a big play guy. Metcalf is a touchdown guy. So yeah, I, I could see that. Number fifteen, it's T. Higgins. He's going, and I mentioned it yesterday. In fact, I'll shut up here in a second because I made a long, drawn-out case to him being overvalued. I'm at 21. Uh, the ADP is the top of the third at wide receiver 12. I think it's too expensive. If you want to hear everything I said as to why, you can listen to Ice and Fire episode from yesterday. Um, I just think I think everything has to go right for him to hit this ADP, and the odds of that are very low. Um you guys gave rebuttals. I mean, you talked about the fact that a couple of his games he was injured, didn't play a lot of snaps, and you projected the other games. That's tough because you don't know if those two games that he came out injured and he's healthy in them, you don't know if they were duds or studs, and he has a lot of both. He has a lot of games where he wasn't that good. He, had, he has a lot of games where he was. So it's hard to know what that outcome would have been. Um, but, you know, he's going very, very high. He's going at wide receiver 12. He's going ahead of the guys we've talked to. He's going ahead of Devontae Smith. Yeah, when when uh, I like Devontae Smith better, but uh, when, whenever you're looking at these wide receiver twos for their teams that are very, very talented, that are playing with good quarterbacks on good offenses, you basically are saying, I'm betting on a young, talented player with a great quarterback who's got a great offense. And that's usually a wise bet to make. So... Are you drafting him near his ceiling? Uh, potentially, yes. Now, not at all if you, he has the baked-in upside of should something happen to Jamar Chase, sure. he could go nuclear. He's He he would be the number one read for Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's going to throw 4,535. So he does have a ceiling case, um, you know, as, as injury protection insurance – uh, for Jamar Chase, who has missed games already. I mean, we brought up last year. Oh, some of some of Higgins' big games were when Jamar Chase missed. Well, yeah, that that could still happen again. And when they were both on the field, he was actually pretty consistent there too. So I I don't have a problem just betting on Joe Burrow and and the talent of T Higgins. Clearly, no one has that problem based on where he's being drafted. Right. Yeah. He. <clears throat> I'm with Jason. That it's it's a bet on. The player, which I think T. Higgins on pretty much most other teams would be the number one wide receiver. They just happen to have Jamar Chase, who's uh, what I top three wide receiver in the NFL already. And it's a bet on the Cincinnati Bengals continuing to do what they did last year, which was they they let Joe Burrow go and cook and actually be the the, the team. It was no longer the scared Zach Taylor, we're going to run, 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 Joe Burrow bail us out type of an offense. So he's just he is an extremely difficult player because I want him on my teams. Yeah, he's very like, safe. I'm not. This is nothing about T. Higgins being bad. I just wish right. he was the wide receiver 18 and ADP. That's it. Yes. At 18, I'd be, I'd be cool with that. I, I just, I'm a little nervous about the price. Let's totally talk, agree. Let's talk about a player now that has been – Rarely talked about mm -hmm. this offseason. We've had big debates on certain players, but this guy's ranked ahead of everybody we've talked about so far, and it's number 14, Amari Cooper. Still hanging with Mr. Cooper here. I've got him at 13, Jason at 17, Mike at 17. This is Perfect another, ranking, Mike. This is another, Thank you. This is another example. I like yours too. 406, wide receiver 18 off the board, a round and a half later than T. Higgins. If Deshaun Watson is back to the form where he finished at, what, number five, three, four years in a row. Sure. It's a big if. Um, it's a little if. It's a pretty big if. I think if. it's a little if. 
Really? I, I do. Just, I actually think it's a very little if. Just watching him play last year, I don't know if uh, I shared it with the company Slack, uh, but Warren Sharp did a tweet thread of all of, of Deshaun Watson's longest throws, like air yard throws. Oh, man. There, the touch and the decision-making was not it even It was like close. he did, hadn't played football in a while. Right. I Look, I, to me, it's a lower... It's a lower if because this is an established, extremely talented individual. The di his decline did come with age. He had he played a couple of really tough matchups and he hadn't played in a year and a half. He's got a whole off season and I have more confidence in him. I know nobody wants him to succeed. I understand that, but if he does, Amari Cooper may be undervalued at the wide receiver eighteen and ADPs. That's fair in ADP. We all have him higher than that. Because he is a he is the go to receiver for this roster, and he still is. Like I like Elijah Moore. I think he'll be involved. I like David Njoku. He'll be involved. It's Amari Cooper's wide receiver room. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, when you look at last year, it's hard to separate that. You know, he, he was so good with Jacoby Brissett, and he was so bad with Deshaun Watson. And the if question about whether Watson gets it together or not, to me, I think that there is some. Uh, it's not just rust and it's not just time not playing football it's also the public pressure pressure that he has gone through the 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 human element of you know like when tiger woods uh had his fall from grace it it affected his play for a long time and i know there were injuries there as well um but it's like I, I, he's a human being and the whole world wants him to fail and so um, I think it I think it affects performance on the field. Now, maybe that's a silly way to look at it, but that's kind of how I'm making the bet. That's why I see it as a big if. And Amari Cooper has always been a player who is really good, but it always comes inconsistently. He'll always have half the season that's good and half the season that's bad. We're going into his ninth season. Like We know what Amari Cooper is. He's a really solid NFL wide receiver who, for fantasy purposes, will finish the year strongly and be inconsistent on the path to get there. Where he's being drafted, I feel like there are players I'm more excited about um, in the fourth round. You know, that, that's where I talked about Keenan Allen yesterday. Like, I would rather, if I'm going to bet on, uh, I'd rather bet on Joe Burrow and Herbert than on Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of our biggest disagreements on the show this year is how we see that playing out for the Cleveland Browns. I think that they are going to be a really good team. You guys are not bullish on Deshaun Watson's output. Um, they're going to start the season uh, at home against Cincinnati, then play the Steelers, the Titans, and the Ravens. Uh, their three out of the four games are going to be at home to start the season. That's still, that's a tough and um, that's a tough four pack. And we'll get to see it. We'll get to see it on display. And, you know, Marty Cooper had a really good start to it last year. Last mm -hmm. year, yes. he was one of the best picks in the draft through the first 12 weeks. And then it, it obviously fell off. Uh, Chris Olave comes in at 13. Ooh. Wide receiver 13 off the board. ADP of 306. Mike's the highest at 13. I'm at 15. Jason at 18. Just 23 years old. Get ready for year two of this budding superstar. Um, I wish the I wish the draft price was a little lower. Agreed. I, I, I do wish that uh, other people were somehow blind to his talent. <laughs> but that's this is where we are with fantasy football. It's it the the crowd is getting better at the game, and the, the, like people are catching on of ooh, I should be targeting second year wide receivers who had great rookie seasons because more often than not, it turns those are the players that take the the jet pack into superstardom i love chris olave like he he wins everywhere on the field the the upgrade from andy dalton to Derek carr especially when it comes to deep passes i think is a substantial upgrade i, I don't want to overvalue what Derek carr uh does versus andy dalton but he it's it's enough it is absolutely enough for me to take chris olave at his adp I am in agreement, Andy, that I wish it wasn't there because you are – the, the the risk is you're taking Chris Olave at, at – like there's there's a small margin for error should something go awry. Like if, if Chris Olave is the wide receiver 15 at the end of the year and you spent a third-round pick on him, 
it feels like you didn't get a return on your draft pick. So that's that's the concern. But I think that this guy who outproduced Garrett Wilson, who is going many spots uh, ahead of Chris Olave, who also Aaron Rodgers is an older quarterback. We're not 100% sure that he's got it. But it, this Chris Olave is going, in my in my opinion, will outproduce his ADP. And by next year, he's going to be looked at as one of those top-tier superstars. I saw, I think it was Local Saints Radio, talking about their schedule this year. Oh, and then, yes. And then asking uh, to name the top quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, they don't they don't play any the, of them. Yeah, I mean, they, they play uh, in order. Tannehill, Bryce Young, Jordan Love. Baker Mayfield, Mac Jones, um, C.J. Stroud, presumably. Then you face Lawrence, finally. Pretty good quarterback. Anthony Richardson, Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins. Then you face the Falcons twice with Desmond Ritter. Bryce Young again. Jared Goff. I mean, they don't play any of the – they may – their schedule's nice. Yeah, but what you just said was pro Kendra Miller. Uh, and the and the running <laughs> sure. game and winning ball games. Well, pro defense too. Yeah, ab yeah pro, absolutely. Like they may not not need to air it out as much. They may not need to, but if, looking at the strength of schedule, this is last year's. Of course, if you're applying what happened last year, Tennessee. Yeah, the, was, the building next door. If you hear it coming through the microphone, <laughs> they're bulldozing. Apparently, bulldozing the neighborhood. The, uh, the we're the, going to be the last one. The best matchup for wide receivers was the Tennessee Titans. That's who they open against. The fourth best was the Carolina Panthers. Week four, seventh best. Week five, tenth. Like they have by far the on paper the best strength of schedule for the wide receiver position. And it's a hot. It's not just like oh they have some tough ones at the beginning, then they get into it. No, it's it's exciting. We, we start hot, we close hot, hot to hot. Yeah. Uh, at twelve. Speaking of hot, this was Jason's fire player on yesterday's episode. Keenan Allen of the Chargers. 31 years old. Uh, Mike has him at 10. I got him at 14. Jason at 19. Jason, the question that I think we all have is why do you hate him? <laughs> uh, I made my case for why I love him yesterday. My oh, rankings right. stand where they do, but um, I, you don't have a much safer option out there. Um, every player can get injured. I'm not worried about, like, that's the argument against him, right? Yeah, if he's out there older playing players too, the higher propensity for that to happen. We saw Thielen break down that way. If he's out there playing the role that he has played, you know, the, you know, his entire career and he's out there for 17 games, you're not going to be disappointed with him, especially drafting him as a wide receiver too, where it, it, you're not paying wide receiver one prices in the are draft. You, are you happy in full PPR to have him as your wide receiver one? Like if, that, if if the draft goes yeah, that way, I, you want to spend in, on a onesie position. Or? If I was in full PPR, I would imagine in that situation that means I've got two great running backs and a quarterback already. I grab or one of the Andrews top three. And yeah, or Andrews and Kelsey, and then I, full PPR, I go Keenan as my one. I'd, I'd be I'd be happy with that. Yeah, yeah, we're excited about the offense there. If you want to hear more about our discussions on Keenan Allen, they were uh, verbose yesterday. We we got a chance to get into it. Um, at 11, last wide receiver on today's countdown before breast ball breakdown, it's Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle of the Miami Dolphins, 24 years old. Um, I think I brought it up earlier this offseason. It is a weird thing to have a player that um, outpaced Tyreek Hill in average average yards per reception, and that's what Jalen Waddle did. He is um, as close to Tyreek Hill as you get, and they play on the same football team. Finished at wide receiver seven last year. It was incredible. Managed to do it with Tua in and out of the lineup. Like, I'm so excited about both Waddle and Tyreek Hill in particular. Like, someone on Twitter was like, oh, can I take Tyreek at number three? I'm like, yeah, of course you can. Yep. Tyreek Hill's going to be great, and I think Jalen Waddle will be as well. So uh, is 11 the right spot for him? I got him at nine, Jason 11, Mike 12. We all are in that range. Do you have any nervousness the, around this guy? The My nervousness comes... Because of Tyree Kill, of a when a, when a player is a true superstar wide receiver, you're gonna have games where the other people on the field just disappear, and that happened multiple times to to Jalen Waddle. Like when when it cratered, it was real bad. Now I know I'm not cross referencing these with uh, with non Tua games, but you know wide receiver 60, 75, 98, 68. So the that's 
That's the struggle with Jalen Waddle having to deal with, with, with Tyreek Hill on the other side of the field. It makes things easier a lot of the time, but sometimes it's 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 so easy because you just don't have to do do anything to help the team, and Tyreek Hill handles it. Much better defense in Miami this year. Uh, yeah, uh, you've what, once they get. I mean, Ramsey. Like the, the Ra fact that Jalen Ramsey is going to miss time. That's a that's a pretty big deal. He should only miss a handful of weeks. I, I don't I don't think he's going to. I think he'll be here for the majority of the season, um, which will I don't be know very if that's helpful. That's changed now. What's the latest on that? Maybe the last thing that, I saw I, was that it was uh, that it was like a he did a full he did a full repair. Yeah, uh, I, I, it was going to be a couple months, and then he said, "Was it the he meniscus? promises it was a to full meniscus to beat the timeline gotcha. by uh, by a month?" <laughs> That's <laughs> so, who we want to listen to. No, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, just men menis hearing meniscus freaks me out because this is like, hey, Irv Smith, remember when? Uh, he had his meniscus repaired, and then he didn't play. He missed the whole year. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the last thing I had seen was second half of the year. But regardless, like Bradley Chubb gets to be there from day one, uh, dominant force in the D-line. They've made other improvements. So just bringing it up is one of those things where they, they had to get in six touchdown shootouts last year with Baltimore to to win ball games. I, I wondered if that defensive uh, prowess might impact their upside. Yeah, I mean, Waddle's great. He's obviously being drafted um, f very high. He finished last year as the wide receiver seven in half PPR. He has electric speed. He can win you a week because he can take an 80-yard touchdown, and, and, and it's a worthy pick for drafting a very, very talented player. But I want to make the anti-Waddle case here okay? because as we've gone through this show, obviously I think a lot of people group the – Waddle, Higgins, Devonta Smith grouped together. Yeah, appropriately. Yeah, they're they're young wide receiver twos for their team with superstars on the other side. And I'm sitting here looking at Waddle and saying, uh, he can win me weeks for sure, but he's probably going to be less consistent right, than more Devonta boom Smith. Bust. More boom bust. Yeah. Um, he has a worse quarterback. I mean, even if Tua is good and, and the best part of Tua last year is what we see for the entirety of this season I don't think he's Jalen Hurts I don't think he's Joe Burrow so for a player right now that is in a similar situation as those other two guys but the situation seems a little worse a little inconsistent I'm questioning my own ranking here of saying would I really want Waddle more than Devontae Smith for the for the price I think it's a good question to ask and it might come down to the type of team you build up to the point where you're taking Jalen Waddle. Because well, I mean, at that point, you've drafted one player. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's in the second round. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe the team you plan to build because you have to you have to accept the boom bust part of Jalen Waddle. Waddle feels a little bit more like what Tyreek Hill felt like in previous years. Mm -hmm. Sure, Waddle or Waddle. Hill became a very consistent 119 receptions last year type of guy. But in the beginning of his career, it was much more like, am I getting the number two, number three finish, or am I not? So I think that is something worth thinking about. If you are taking a risk someplace else, maybe you don't take the risk with Waddle and you go with somebody more steady. Tomorrow we're going to have our top 10 wide receiver countdown. Before we close out, we got some best ball. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, Brooks makes a good point. Maybe if you if you do spend that second round pick on Jalen Waddle, maybe you're coming back with Keenan Allen in the fourth. Sure. There you go. Steady, steady that ship. Yeah. Um, all right, Best Ball Breakdown. Every week we're looking at some tips, tricks, insights, thoughts regarding Best Ball and Underdog Fantasy. Sat down last night in my cozy chair. Jumped in a 30-second per pick. Oh, okay. Best ball mania mm. draft last evening. Had a great time. How'd you do? Did you, did you win it? Are you going to win the I best ball mania? I'm going to be winning it, yes. Dude, that's so much money. It is a lot of money. Um, I wish I was winning. Yeah. The 30 seconds, the 30 second per pick. That's a that's a bummer to know already no, it's, who won. It's, it's my team because I have <laughs> DJ Chark on it. Um, <laughs> do, do, do. I just want you to know, like the 30 second per pick, Great fun. Bad father during that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Today's topic, Kyle threw some 
some thoughts in here for us when looking at essentially remembering to look at opportunities as they relate to best ball. So uh, he gave an example of like Debo Samuel right now is being drafted as the average draft position of 18 at the wide receiver position. Um, and he went back and there's an article coming out with more details about this, but he went back and looked at what the average amount of opportunities are for the wide receiver 18. Well, it's 117 opportunities. Then you go and look at our rankings. We put in player projections, right? In the UDK, we tell you every single opportunity we think a player is going to have. And you know, when you look at Debo Samuel in our rankings, he's projected for 168 opportunities. And so kind of taking a look at the fact that opportunity is king in fantasy football, and you have the advantage of having the UDK. You have the advantage of looking at what our projected opportunities are and not undervaluing them. So uh, Debo was that example of, look, a player that we have projected for 168 opportunities is being drafted at a place where the expectation is 117. And on the other end of the spectrum is a guy like Jamison Williams, who it's going to be really hard to get that payoff because – um, right now, his average draft position is the the 50th pick overall. Uh, we've got him for 60 targets. 100th overall, wide receiver 50. Sorry, yes. We have him for, um, yeah, the wide receiver 50, 100th overall. We have him projected for just 60 targets, but over the last 10 years, that spot normally gets 78 targets. And so looking at that gap between opportunity, ADP, paying attention to the UDK and the opportunities and seeing where you might be able to get a value, merely looking at how many chances this player gets to make an impact on the field. Does that make sense? Yeah. I so, and, and, and it's kind of illustrating what we have available to you, um, not just in the UDK, but in the, uh, in the DFS pass as well. So take a look at that. That was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to a hundred dollars using the code ballers. Like I said, Back tomorrow with the Top 10 Wide Receiver episode. You don't want to miss it. And check out the UDK, UltimateDraftKit.com. Goodbye. Oh, it's football time. Kind of. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.